Hello, everyone. I've noticed our water heater blower motor getting increasingly noisier over the past few weeks. As we've just heard, it seems to start up fine, and there isn't really any excess noise at first. But give it a minute and we'll hear a change. Listen for the transition. The bearing noise is about to ramp up here. Do you hear that? We'll keep listening. It gets worse. There it is. This motor is begging for mercy. We were planning a trip away from home, and we didn't want to come back to cold water in a grouchy house sitter, so it was time to do some predictive maintenance. Anyone can predict this blower motor is going to give up. So I replaced it on my schedule, rather than letting it force me to replace it at the worst possible time, which is when we all know it would happen. Oof, that sounds awful. Now listen for the upcoming change. There it is. The burner shut down when the water met the temperature set point. The controller is finishing its cycle by clearing any remaining gases from the combustion chamber. And it seems like the blower motor bearings quieted down in that cooler environment. Okay, it's time to replace this thing. I had a short window of time to get this done, so I didn't waste a lot of time ordering a new blower assembly. I was hoping to find just the motor, but that's more of a challenge than I'd expected. So I dove right in and bought the blower assembly. These blower assemblies are expensive. I'm planning to disassemble the old blower assembly in the future to see if I can replace the bearings. If you have good components left over from a failed water heater, I'd suggest selling them on eBay. They appear to be valuable. So of course you always start by taking the power off of whatever you're working on. I'm going to start removing this blower assembly by disconnecting it from the vent. Loosen up the hose clamps there. And then according to the instruction manual, the owner's manual that came with this unit, there's six screws. There's just six sheet metal screws that hold this thing down onto the top of the water heater. So remove the screws. There's number one.
There's one here, and there's one in here, right in here. My, my finger's on it right here. And you screw right here, one in here, and one back here. My finger's touching it here, and my finger's touching this one back here. Those are the six sheet metal screws that need to be removed. This one was tight. I need to get a screwdriver with a longer shank because I have to go in through the top here and reach all the way down here. So I got an 8 inch screwdriver to reach that one, down in behind here. A longer one might actually be better, but I don't think I have a longer one. That got it though. Okay, that's all six screws out now. Theoretically, this thing should be ready to pull off. This thing has a foam rubber seal on it all the way around the bottom. So it might not lift right off. We'll see. It's probably stuck. And it's pretty well stuck on there. I'm going to need to get some tools to try to pry this off. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to try a 4 inch putty knife, a uh, drywall knife, just to see if I can slip it under there. And it slides under there quite easily. I think you need to be careful doing this because there's wiring that goes down into the tank from here. And you probably don't want to cut the wiring with the knife. I think I hit it right there. But I would say that worked really well. Just be careful because there's, there's wiring inside this container here. This is an electrical junction box and uh, it passes through down to the valve.
coming. I can hear it breaking loose. It's definitely holding down on the back. Oh, okay. So there's a sheet metal chimney that sticks up in the middle of the top of the water heater. So when I try to slide the knife under this hood in the back, and I'll show you once I pull it off what I'm talking about. This prevents it from going under as far as I need it to. Or as far as I would like it to. There it is, the broke loose. And there's a cord, there's a cable connector you need to undo from this connector inside here. I'll try to get a closer shot of that. But here's where that that chimney was coming up into here, so when I tried to slide the knife under the gasket, it was hitting it. And you can see right here what I mean. I was sliding under the gasket and I kept running into that chimney. I came close to, to harming that wire there. But that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm putting it in video so that you can see the pitfalls that I'm not able to see or that I wasn't aware of as I was doing it. Since we're up here, we can see one of the screw holes is right here, another one is right here, and there's one right here, and one right here. So there's four screws around this gasket, right where the water heater chimney is. I'll just try to clean that surface off a bit, just wipe it down. This is just a dry rag. Seems to be good enough. So I'm going to need to plug this six pin connector into here on the control board. The one in the original one that I just removed had a white connector. This one's black. But they only plug in in one direction so it shouldn't be too difficult to figure it out. Went right in, no problem.
looks like this has some new screws. Yep, six new screws. Might as well just use the originals because I have them. I'm going to start with the ones in the very back for lining things up. That one just dropped right in. It was already lined up. That one is not lined up. Just a question of lining these screws up with the holes in the top of the tank. There we go, there's one. Now that one's not lined up. Hot tip. Start one screw in back to pivot the assembly on. Then start one screw in the front. After that, the rest of the screw should be perfectly aligned with the pre-existing holes. Maybe more easily said than done. Let me try this. Yes, one screw in back, then one in front. The holes in this mounting plate uh, up front are slotted front to back, but side to side they're not. So this might help me line everything up. Okay, now that one is started and it's straight. So this one back here ought to be lined up pretty good now. And it is, it dropped right in. So I would say start by getting one of the back ones in the very back started. Just get it started, not tight. And then get the slotted ones started in the front because that'll give you the, the rotation on that back screw. Then once these are in and that's in, then everything should be lined up where the others will just drop right in. And I need a magnetic screwdriver to get this one. <laughs> Here it is. It, once I got it in into the hole, it dropped right into the hole in the top of the water heater, in the top of the tank. And this one is lined up perfectly. So now it's just a question of go around and snug them all down. I'm going back and forth and tightening them, kind of a zigzag pattern, for what it's worth. I think as long as you get them all evenly tightened and sufficiently tightened so that the foam rubber seal is slightly compressed, that's probably going to be fine.
That's good. They're all very snug. They don't have to be super tight, I think. But I haven't connected it to the exhaust vent yet. Okay. Now it's time to plug it in. I'm going to leave this cord mostly coiled up. It's so long. I don't need all that. Okay. All right, it's time to power it up and test it out and see how it works. And it's not calling for hot water now. I'm going to go run some hot water into the sink on the other end of the basement until this starts. Okay, time to test it out. Let's see if it starts up. Nope, but I'm running hot water into the sink down there, so it should start up any minute. I'm going to go crank up the water so it comes out faster. A few minutes later. And we have ignition. I hear the flame is on. After the first minute, it's still sounding fine. A few minutes later, So that sounded good the whole time it was running. This definitely solved my problem. So this is a GE power vent water heater. It's a six year limited tank and parts warranty. Down here the fine print says manufactured under trademark license by Rheem Manufacturing Company. So this is a Rheem water heater. This one has a new gas valve, which I replaced in my previous water heater videos. And now it has a new blower motor assembly. This unit is 13 years old. So now it's just a question of time. At some point, the tank will develop a leak and we'll need a new water heater. I really need to start investigating our options. These things come with that overheat sensor on the back of the flue. The flue pressure sensor. Inside this housing, there's a, a circuit board. 
that controls the motor and uh, gets the input from the, pre the temperature sensor on the back. And it's the main power switch is in here as well. There's the pressure sensor. So there's a lot more to this assembly than just the motor. But if you're interested in seeing that disassembled and what it looks like inside, stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Please take a moment to like and subscribe.